For thousands of years, while glaciers erased life to the north, the forests of Appalachia endured, unchanged, unbroken, and older than most living ecosystems on Earth. The oldest pollen cores show temperate hardwoods never vanished here, and their genetic lineages stretch beyond the last ice age. But what exactly allowed these forests to survive when so many others were wiped away? The answer upends what we think we know about ancient environments. Sediment cores drawn from Appalachian lakes and bogs provide a direct record of ecological persistence. In the late 1970s and the 1980s, paleoecologists Paul and Hazel Delcourt extracted cores from southern Appalachian basins, and they analyzed the fossil pollen embedded in each layer. These sequences, some spanning more than 20,000 years, reveal an unbroken influx of temperate tree pollen, oak, hickory, beech, through the entire late Pleistocene and into the present. This sustained pollen record indicates continuity. In sharp contrast, pollen records from regions north of the glacial boundary show temperate taxa vanishing entirely during glacial maxima and only reappearing as forests recolonized after ice retreat. In Appalachia, the sedimentary archive documents local survival, not distant recolonization. The pollen influx rates remain substantial, indicating that established forests, not sparse pioneer stands, dominated these landscapes even at the height of glacial cold. These findings provide the first line of proof that the ecological identity of Appalachian forests is not a recent assembly. The record of fossil pollen demonstrates continuity traceable beyond the last ice age, and it requires a physical explanation for how these forests endured when so many others disappeared. During the last glacial maximum, the Laurentide ice sheet advanced southward, blanketing much of what is now the northern United States beneath hundreds of meters of ice. Yet the main body of the Appalachians lay beyond the reach of this glacial front. Geological mapping, including the synthesis by Dyke and colleagues in 2003, shows that the southernmost edge of the Laurentide stopped abruptly near the Ohio River. South of this line, the landscape lacks the telltale signs of glaciation. No terminal moraines, no glacial erratics, and no striated bedrock. The core of the Appalachians, stretching through eastern Kentucky, Tennessee, western North Carolina, and southwestern Virginia, remained untouched by ice. This unglaciated status was not an accident of latitude alone. The orientation and elevation of the ridges, coupled with regional climate patterns, prevented the accumulation of permanent ice. While cold air and frost shaped the highlands, the mountains themselves acted as a shield, preserving valleys and slopes from the erosive force of glaciers. This created a refugium corridor, a continuous belt where temperate forests and their resident species could persist while northern ecosystems were erased. The absence of glacial reset in these mountains meant that soils, root systems, and whole ecological communities survived in place rather than being scraped away and rebuilt from scratch. The physical geography of the Appalachians thus provided the mechanism for biological continuity, allowing ancient lineages to endure through the harshest phases of the Ice Age. The result is a landscape where the living forest is not a recent recolonization, but a direct descendant of pre-glacial ecosystems, preserved by the very landforms that define the region. Distribution patterns in the Appalachian forests reflect the underlying structure of the land itself. 
Rather than following state borders or county lines, the boundaries of these ecosystems trace the contours of ridges, valleys, and moisture gradients. Woodland salamanders illustrate this principle at a fine scale. In old growth plots at Lily Cornet Woods, occupancy models for Plethodon Richmondi and Plethodon Kentucky reveal that the likelihood of both species sharing a site rises sharply as soil moisture approaches 15%, then levels off beyond 20%. This non-linear threshold points to a specific environmental boundary. Below it, the forest floor is effectively partitioned, and above it, both species can coexist. Soil moisture, canopy cover, and slope positioned together shape these microhabitats, making the distribution of salamanders a living map of the forest's physical template. These patterns are not isolated to a single woodland tract. Throughout the Appalachians, the presence and abundance of moisture-sensitive species are dictated by the orientation of slopes, the depth of valleys, and the shading of ridges. Where ridges catch clouds and valleys trap cool, humid air, populations remain stable and genetically uninterrupted. The result is a patchwork of ranges that align with the geography of the mountains, not with the lines drawn on a map. This spatial organization encodes the history of ancient refugia, preserving the continuity of species that have tracked moisture and shelter across millennia. The expectation, supported by these fine-scale occupancy patterns, is that genetic data will reveal deep splits wherever these physical refuges have remained isolated. In the Appalachians, the living forest is structured by the land's enduring geometry. Genetic data collected from Appalachian forest species reveal a timeline that stretches far beyond the end of the last ice age. In canopy trees such as oaks, beeches, and hemlocks, and in understory plants like trillium and hexastylus, molecular analyses uncover patterns of divergence that do not align with recent recolonization. Instead, these patterns indicate deep time continuity within place. Chloroplast DNA haplotypes, which are distinct genetic lineages passed down through seeds, are often unique to populations in the Southern Appalachians. These private haplotypes, absent from populations in Northern or Western forests, indicate that these lineages have been isolated and evolving locally for tens of thousands of years. Calibrated molecular clocks using both fossil records and known mutation rates place many of these genetic splits in the mid to late Pleistocene, well before the last glacial maximum. In several species, divergence estimates exceed 50,000 years, with some lineages tracing separation events back to 100,000 years ago or more. These timeframes are representative of a broad pattern across both canopy and understory taxa, and they support long-term persistence rather than recent recolonization. For example, in the American beech and eastern hemlock, southern Appalachian populations harbor multiple private alleles, genetic variants not found elsewhere, which suggests long-term persistence within local refugia. This pattern repeats across unrelated taxa, indicating that small, sheltered populations persisted in place where surrounding regions were glaciated or otherwise reset. This molecular signal is not confined to a single species or a single genetic marker. Across a wide range of forest plants, genetic diversity in the Southern Appalachians is both deeper and more complex than in areas that were glaciated. 
The presence of multiple private haplotypes within these populations demonstrates that they have not simply recolonized from elsewhere after glaciation, but have maintained continuous, in-place evolution over an extended time scale. The evidence therefore adds a temporal dimension to the spatial patterns observed in the landscape. Taken together, the molecular data confirm that the ecological continuity of Appalachia is mirrored by the genetic antiquity of its living communities. These forests function as genetic archives, demonstrating persistence and evolution over tens of thousands of years. Soils in the central and southern Appalachians reveal a history measured not in centuries, but in millennia. Unlike northern landscapes stripped to bedrock by glaciers, these mountain soils have developed uninterrupted over tens of thousands of years. Profiles several meters deep, layered with distinct horizons of clay, silt, and organic matter, result from continuous weathering of ancient bedrock primarily metamorphic and sedimentary units laid down during the Paleozoic era. This geological stability has produced nutrient cycles that are both predictable and resilient. Long-term monitoring at the Coweta Hydrologic Laboratory in North Carolina shows that annual budgets for key nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus remain remarkably steady over decades even in the face of moderate disturbance. Stream flow chemistry measured at Coweta since the 1930s demonstrates that mineral inputs and biological outputs are balanced, with no signs of the rapid leaching or nutrient flushes typical of newly formed or recently disturbed soils. Hydrology follows the same pattern of stability. The ridge and valley geometry of the region creates a network of perennial streams and groundwater pathways that supply moisture year-round, even during periodic droughts. Deep-rooted trees, oaks, hickories, and beaches anchor themselves in these soils, drawing on water reserves that persist through seasonal fluctuations. The result is a forest structure that supports not only surface vegetation, but also extensive subterranean fungal and microbial communities, all dependent on the predictability of soil moisture and chemistry. Corridors of ecological continuity are maintained by the very shape of the land. The alignment of ridges and valleys forms natural pathways for species movement, allowing populations to remain connected across distances and through climatic shifts. These corridors are not theoretical genetic studies of both plants and animals, show gradual changes in allele frequencies along these routes, a sign of ongoing gene flow. Where the landscape has remained undisturbed, these corridors still function, supporting the persistence of ancient lineages. The enduring physical template, soils, water, and topography, provides the material foundation for the biological continuity seen in Appalachian forests today. Today, Appalachian forests hold living genetic archives, older than most ecosystems on the continent. As climate shifts and fragmentation accelerate, these ancient refugees are becoming critical for biodiversity and resilience. Their continuity is not just history, it is a baseline for the future. What survives here may shape what survives anywhere.